Hello everyone, welcome to this virtual event. My name is Shishir Rege. I am a technical sales specialist with Balaf Inc. Uh, for Controls Architecture. And uh, today I'm gonna talk to you about IOLink in the context of a smart factory. As you know, IOLink is an open technology and uh, this kind of shows we brought in a lot of different uh, manufacturers' devices and connected with Balaf IOLink Masters. So uh, without further ado, I'll get back to the presentation. Thank you. Hello everyone. So we're gonna talk today about IOLink in Smart Factory. And in this presentation, we're gonna cover three different topics here. We are going to discuss first about the difference between what a factory means and what makes a factory smarter or smart factory. Then we'll make a case for the use of IOLink in the smart factory. And lastly, we will discuss how IOLink helps create value in the smart factory and how it enables Industry 4.0 in short. So getting started with that, <clears throat> the very purpose or the existence of a factory is to utilize its resources in a meaningful fashion to create value for all of its stakeholders. For example, it creates quality goods and products for its customers and employment or living for its workers, and finally the profits for its shareholders. So today we live in a flat world economy, meaning uh, there is a competition across the globe for the same or similar products. That changes the picture drastically. It adds more pressure on the production and we need to be nimble and that presence uh, and be present to our customers and accept their ever-changing demands. Which brings us to the concept of this smart factory. We got to also be mindful that the factory exists while it's producing results for its stakeholders. The factory may cease to exist if it fails to provide meaningful products for its customers in a timely fashion or it starts incurring losses in its operation. So when we talk about smart factory, the question comes, so what is it? What is the smart factory? And uh, we, cannot, we cannot improve and be more productive and run our operations uh, without, without the competition. So the very, so when we talk about smart factory, simply put, a smart factory is the operation that utilizes its resources to create value for its stakeholders in the manner that creates a competitive advantage for itself. What that means is uh, the competitive advantage could be realized in multiple forms. For example, quick changeovers in the operations or on-demand product creation, that is single batch size or mass customizations or improved visibility on the plant floor for asset tracking or error proofing or including access control to the machines. Uh, improved efficiency to produce more with less or reduce the unplanned downtime and improved products time to market. So those are all the examples. There could be more competitive advantages that we can bring to the table, okay? So when we talk about smart factory, there is no finish line to the smart factory. That means it's, it operates always on a continuum, right? So the factory always has to challenge itself to be better and smarter and, uh, than it was before. The smart factory can continue to create competitive advantage through the two interdependent facets. One is called the continuous improvement and the other one is called efficient and lean philosophy or operations. The efficient and lean operations philosophy is our day-to-day -day activities that are focused on eliminating waste and reducing non-value added activities. Whereas the continuous improvement looks at our existing state and figures out ways to improve that existing state. Okay, so when we discuss about continuous improvements, we are talking about predictive analytics, track and trace, error proofing, visibility, and those types of objectives. When we discuss about efficient or lean operations, we are referring to how can I utilize predictive maintenance in my operations? How can I troubleshoot machines faster? Or how can I do remote 
monitoring of these activities. And again, as I said, they are feeding each other for the continuous improvement. So in order to achieve any of these objectives of the smart factory, what we need is data. We need data about the production processes that are going on and <clears throat> what we typically call the OEE. We also need data about our tools and assets and how they are calibrated, how many hours we have on those tools and uh, also about the systems that we are performing uh, maintenance on. When is the maintenance due on certain machines or certain tools and how it is being done? How are the end devices are performing or do they need any tune up or calibration of themselves? Or for example, of, does a photo I need to be cleaned out? <clears throat> so whatever data we collect needs to be put in a context. It has to be a reliable, information that we are collecting and it has to be a relevant information. Then only we can take actions based on that data. A Lot of this data is already available today, but honestly, how many factories know about the health of their, their devices? Or how many know that they're gonna have a failure within the next few hours, um, causing the long down times? We don't. And this means optimizing operations. We need smarter devices, smarter end devices specifically, to generate that data so that we can act on it and improve our performances. So the question comes, why do I need, why do I need data from sensors and end devices? Well, the most sensors and devices already has this data built in. Okay, smart devices can help achieve the objectives, for example, uh, a pressure sensor can talk about, hey, uh, I'm experiencing more than usual vibrations. So it's experiencing its ambient situation. So that may help prevent the breakdown so you can lubricate the system well. Or the other way is that pressure sensor is telling, hey, I'm experiencing more than usual ambient temperature and I may not function right. Or a photo eye telling you that, hey, the remitted light uh, efficiency has gone down, so maybe I'm knocked out of alignment, or there is a problem, my lens might be cloudy. So come take a look at it before the operation fails. So that's the in important information that the sensors can provide. Now, we got to understand that most, the, most of these sensors or end devices already have this intelligence built into them, okay? <clears throat> and it's been there for a while. Most of these devices have microchips or some level of computing power built into them. And they are capable of collecting and understanding the ambient systems as well as themselves. Unfortunately, the methods that we were using to integrate these devices called signal communication, which are incapable or limited to the information they can provide. Okay. So for example, I can talk about, uh, there are uh, Namur or uh, Aussie systems that are probably out there that attempt at getting a lot of this information out, but either they are limited by bandwidth or limited by communication, what they can provide. Now, that leaves us with two alternative technologies. And this is what brings us to that IOMI. So the two commonly used technologies that can provide this data is one is a networked devices or field buses and the other one is IOLink. There is a particular reason why we think IOLink is best suited communication at this device level. And uh, there is four different reasons that I can think of. Is first of all, IOLink utilizes a standard sensor cable for the data communication. Whereas when you talk about network or field buses, they need expensive shielded cables, which are you typically not high flex. Now we are talking about powering up these devices. The, the same standard sensor cable that's used provides power to those devices as well. Whereas if you have the network devices, most of the networks out there do not have power over ethernet technology. That means it requires a separate power connection, making these devices bulkier not smaller 
Uh, the whole purpose of using microchips in it is to make them smaller and easier. The third difference is uh, with IO-Link, there is no setup or addressing required. It's what we call that plug and play mentality. On the other hand, if you have a network or a field bus, it requires an IP address. There are limitations on how many IP addresses can be on a subnet, and there is a network dependent installation. You may have to configure that IP address beforehand on a lot of these different networks. Again, when you change the network, the device changes. It's very expensive to have all the network interfaces built into a single sensor. The, the lastly, when you use IO-Link, there is no additional hardware required. But with networks, depending on how that network is structured, you may need switches and routers, and there is additional cost of maintaining those switches and routers as well. So given these differences, IO-Link comes out to be the best suited technology for this device level communication. And when we talk about how IO-Link helps uh, with these technologies is <coughs> IO-Link offers three types of data on the same cable. Okay, it has the process data, which is uh, the primary purpose of that sensor, what uh, the process component that it, it needs to provide. The second is the parameter or the configuration data where you can actually set some ambient conditions or switching points or alerts that you can set up, even the calibration data. And thirdly, the events data where the sensor after detecting abnormal condition fires a signal to let the PLC or the controller know through the master that, hey, there is something wrong or we need to check that. So this, this is what makes IO-Link even more suitable for these types of um, more diagnostic ready technologies. IO-Link on the other hand also reduces number of interfaces on the plant floor. First of all it's a network independent technology that means it can be utilized with your existing networks or field buses there is no additional hardware software required to integrate IO-Link. Secondly it offers that single standard interface whether you have a discrete IO or so-called the dumb I.O. devices, or even the analog I.O. devices. The discrete I.O. devices can be brought onto I.O. Link using the I.O. Link hubs. You can bring in uh, analog devices using the analog hubs, uh, so which, it, which acts as an aggregator to convert that analog signal to I.O. Link data communication, along with some level of diagnostics capability. You can also utilize smart devices and sensors which have IO-Link built in, as well as you could utilize specialty devices like RFID or smart light for visualization or RS-232 devices or any other serial type of communications and those uh, devices and bring it on a single standard sensor cable, single standard interface throughout your plant floor. So that also reduces lot more uh, helps with the ease, ease of troubleshooting and replacement, ease of replacement. Also, IO-Link has a built-in ability to enable your applications for the next generation of Industry 4.0. What is shown here is a machine controller either controlling the IO-Link master and all the IO-Link devices for the process uh, communication but at the same time, you could have an edge, edge device like a gateway that can pull data out of these sensors directly to store it in store or visualize in the cloud system or wherever local servers or any of those uh, devices. So that makes IO-Link even more attractive for these next generation applications. There is actually lots of open source technologies that help you bring all this data to create dashboards that are more relevant to your applications. That is enabling remote monitoring or even predictive analytics type of applications for the future. So in short, <clears throat> just to summarize this whole concept here, our factories need to become smarter to compete effectively in this flat world. And smart factories operate with a lean philosophy and a principle of continuous operations, or uh, continuous improvements. What that means is you need a lot more data 
to make data-driven decisions for your continuous improvement processes or even your for lean philosophy. What that leads us to having smart devices, uh, integrating these smart devices, and integration of these smart devices doesn't have to be expensive or uh, a burdensome application. It should be easier to do, and that's where IOLink really shines. It's a best suited technology as it replaces signal communication from the plant floor to make it a data communication with inherent benefits of ease of integration. IOLink, in addition to helping making the factory smarter for today, it also has a built-in capability for enabling condition monitoring or data collection initiatives to enable your factory for Industry 4.0. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I'll be available if you have any questions.